Look at this one, it's actually awful. guys so here we go episode number two with the mk1 audi tt quattro which we have a laundry list of things to go over and talk about last time was basically just getting it running again and then sanitizing it this thing was absolutely filthy and as you can see we have a front bumper cover on there so i've done a few things here that i'm going to show you guys to be honest with you it was really hard for me to get motivated to get the camera out while i was working here so obviously it's something i just have to do so i'm going to set you up in the back i am going to vacuum out under the spare tire carrier because we got that out we're going to be removing moving some more weight and then talk about what we're doing with the front bumper here. So let's start by getting that nastiness cleaned out of there and then we got some tail lights to put in as well. So let's get to it. All right, next up, these tail lights are gross. To me, they always looked, and I've said this before, but like they're half full with water. You can see they just don't fit real well, and they're those eBay go fast lights. They're starting to peel up in here. I've always hated these. They got dust in them. Um, I think this is the corner. Yeah, right here, look at that. They do not fit worth the shit. So we did something with these ones. We're gonna put these ones in the car. Don't even really know how these are bolted in there. Easy enough. Two of those, one more. I think it should just, nice. Two, that barely fits in there. It's China. Boy Scout motto, be prepared. the Germans made a car that's easy to service. Let's do this side. I'm so excited to get these out of here. These things suck. Two. Yeah, and then so they plugged all these lights in here, right? Well, the stock lights don't use this. This is an adapter for these god-awful eBay lights. So you can see that. And then, look at this one, it's actually awful. This whole assembly, which they didn't even bother to take the double-sided tape off of, just shoved it in there. Just plugs into your stock harness. So, get these bent back without breaking them. Or stabbing myself. Then you look at this factory light. I got these from Europe. We'll talk about it, but it just plugs in right there. So then there's a little alignment pin here and this just 
snaps right into here. Like that. You can line up your pin. And that goes right in. Then all you gotta do is put these two little dealy bobs back. And now that all the wiring's out of the way, it's a lot easier to get at it. Find the hole. That is so easy, I'm so surprised. They're a little darker than stock. I added some pin striping, but those look so much better than what was in there. I always love the back end of this car. It's like a beetle on steroids. And this is the mess that we removed. So this harness goes to one light, this one goes to the other. God, these were gross. Again, look at that lens. It fell off. It just look awful. You belong in the trash. Let's wander around the front. Pop the hood. This is factory, by the way. Oof. talk about what we did with the front bumper all right so coming over to the front of the car we're gonna open the hood and talk about this quick release bumper that we got going so hoods up I'll flip you around in a second but first you can see there's no lights in the car there's no grill we're gonna talk about the whole plan with this car in a second but we're not gonna be running headlights I got pod lights coming we're gonna go three on each side kind of like one two three and then same thing up on the other side we'll turn you over and we'll kind of explain how we did this I can get this bumper off in about 30 seconds and we'll go over the whole car in a minute so down here, just to kind of hold the corners of the car in, these are actually O-rings, and then this is just some hardware. The only thing I bought was a stainless bolt and a stainless spacer, and then there's actually a few little O-rings on this as well to give this washer just a little bit of give. So that's gonna hold our corner in, and then down in here, you can see one stud right here that's actually connected to this bumper. There's two on each side just to kind of line it up when you push it on. This will keep that in. And then we go under the hood here. I have two stainless 10 millimeter bolts that are just hand tight on this big rubber bushing. So there's one of those right here. There's one right over here. And then down on this side. And then we got the same thing right here. And then when you're ready to take your bumper off, you just pull these off of there and you can take it off. When you get it lined up, ready to go back on, it just slides up just like this. I do have a whole box of these. They like to wear out and dry rot. So we got extras, but that should be plenty strong. You can see we have a big opening in the grill there. And again, we do not have any headlights. And then Audi, in its infinite wisdom, has this tray on top of the batteries. I got these little rubber deals on here just so you don't smack your finger on the bolt. But I ran bolts up through the bottom of this little bracket I made so it just kind of hooks on there. And there's one right on this side as well. So now all you have to do to get at your battery is just take that off the studs and everything's right there. I got it disconnected and then you can just line it up and put it back down. So the question that needs to be answered, and today I was just buttoning up some small stuff, figuring out this quick release, and you can see there it does go pretty quick. So that's solved, that's nailed down. Again, this thing isn't gonna stay primer. I think I'm gonna go black. I'm not entirely sure, but I think I'm gonna go black.
what are we doing with this TT? You can see we're working on getting our logo on the back there. And before I really dive into this, I just wanna give you an idea of some of the stuff that's coming up. So let's go over to the window list. All right, so the first one's already gone. That was Andy coming and helping us clean from last video. Then we got airbag disable, care and seat reinstall. And this is a friend of mine. She's actually kind of repairing the seat bolster, which was ripped. You saw that when we were washing the seats. We are dropping the seat off to get repaired. We gotta do an oil change. I'm gonna do an engine flush as well. We have to weld the diff. We have a spare diff. We have to mess with the front axles of the car. We're actually doing a front axle delete. We need to do a hull deck service. We need to install a fire extinguisher. We have to get the hull decks controller, which is about $800, which is why there's a frowny face there. Um, hood, cooling, some of that stuff we'll talk about. We have to get the coolant out and put water in it, and we gotta dump the catch can. There's more. This is just kind of for me to halfway organize my thoughts. So with that being said and out there, this 2000 Audi TT is going to the drift track. Now, how is that gonna be, you say? This thing is all wheel drive and it's all wheel drive, meaning it's a hull deck system. A lot of people call this fake all wheel drive. Well, there's gonna be a process here and the long and the short of it is we gotta remove the front axles. We have a whole spare diff and hull deck assembly, but we're gonna weld the diff. And then comes the fun part, which is we're gonna get a plug and play hull deck controller, which is gonna split the power 50-50. And then because we're not gonna have front axles, all that power is gonna get sent to the back. Now, why are we doing this with the Audi? You know, these things are going up in value and this one, it's not in great shape at all. I mean, you've seen that, it's not a complete fleet junker could it be saved yes it could be saved is it going to be more effort and more expensive than turning it into a drift car to do it the right way probably this thing needs body work it needs a whole new paint job it needs a lot of stuff and i wanted to keep the car around i like these cars it's not been a car that's ever been like my favorite car to own in the entire world i've kind of grown to love it i love driving around hearing the boost noises all that kind of stuff but this is just going to be a more practical use for the car and over the last couple of years you guys you've seen us out at the drift track with orville monster squash racing and i've just been dying to get out there we built his mustang i helped a little bit with the z i've been on countless ride-alongs at the track i got to drive the mustang once and drift around some cones and this was just the easiest way to do it. My pipe dream is to have a drift truck with a Mazda, which we have sitting out there. We have a 4.7 V8 out of a Tundra. Um, that I'm not even gonna talk about right now because this was just a way easier way to get into the sport and hopefully have some fun. Do I think the hull deck system is going to hold the power and the abuse that we're gonna throw at it? You know, we'll see. I'm not sure. I've only seen one documented MK1 TT out at the drift track. That one was true rear wheel drive converted. It had a longitudinal mounted engine. This is obviously a transverse engine. We're going to have our work cut out for us. I don't know if the hull decks is going to hold up to the power. And the other thing I'm worried about is keeping this 1.8T cool. So we'll talk about a few things we're going to do to try to give it the best fighting chance that we can. That's one of the reasons that we're not going to put the stock headlights back in there. We're going to put pod lights in and hopefully get some airflow moving through through the hood. There also is a weather stripping piece in the front up here up by the wiper cowl that we can take out and that's going to hopefully in theory let the air pass through the headlight housings and then exit the hood. So we got a lot of work to do. A lot of this is going to be trial and error. I just kind of wanted to give you guys a little update and use this video just to kind of explain what we're doing. Nitty gritty stuff is going to come in episode number three because I want to tear apart that rear end and what I think I'm going to do is build the one that I have extra, do the hall deck service, change the fluid, get the diff welded and then just swap it out as a unit. So if you guys enjoyed this video and you're excited about seeing our journey getting the MK1 TT out to the drift track, drop me a comment on this video, like and subscribe if you have not already, and as always, we'll see you next time.